everybody, welcome to Storytime with Fairfield County Library. My name is Christina and I am so excited for Storytime today. You guys ready? Okay, awesome. This week our theme is bugs. That means this week we're going to read some books that are all about creepy crawlies. Okay, our first book is An Ant's Day Off by Barney Becker, illustrated by Nina Layden and published by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. I'm taking the day off, said Bart. I'm tired of working. No ant should ever take the day off, the spent boy reminded him, nervously against his will. Never ever in the history of ant dog. Bart and Floyd were sand ants. They spent their days under the ground working all the time. They had never seen the snow or felt the rain. This morning, as Bart toiled around the mound of sand he was to move from tunnel 9292 to tunnel 49A, he glanced up. High above was a glimmer of blue, far in the way, and it cried to him, Come little ants, come out and play. You must work and work and work some more, Floyd said, seeing the wild look in Bart's eyes. Happiness is a finished chore. But it was too late. Bart threw down his load of sand and began to cry. Don't! cried Floyd. They'll never let you back in. Up and up, Bart scrambled. His head popped out into a bright spring day. He nearly fainted with the shock of it all. The sky was too high to imagine the end. A breeze tugged at his antenna and the sun fell golden warm on his head. Get a move on, barked a stern ant from the nest. Food patrols over there. Bart hurried down the mound to join the rest. All the other ants kept their eyes straight ahead and their noses to the ground as they marched toward the remains of a giant bagel. But Bart saw an opening in the grass and scurried in. To a broad river. Row, said a boy. Row, said another voice. Bart peered around the edge of a water iris. He saw two frogs jumping in. Looking down the stream, the one frog. Merrily, 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 said the other frog. Together they croaked. Bye, little bud. Bart hopped onto a leaf lying near the water's edge and pushed himself out into the stream. Hello, he cried to the frog. Then, to his horror, the larger frog snapped a fly into its mouth. The smaller frog eyed Bart hungrily. Frog's tongue flicked out, but just then the current picked up and Bart floated out of reach. The little frog settled back with a bite. Growl, he croaked. No, croaked the big frog. Inside his head, Bart heard a tiny voice. It sounded just like his. Always work, never rest. You see what kinds of idleness? The boy's voice said. Perhaps that's the eagle that I've heard about, Bart thought. Suddenly his leaf caught on a branch and spun to a stop. Bart scrambled to the shore. A tall dandelion stood in his way. Maybe he could see just a bit more of the world before he went. Petals were soft, the sun was warm. For the first time in his life, Bart wasn't doing anything. Don't you feel bad, Floyd's voice said, lying here lazy and useless while your fellow ants struggle below. I guess I do, Bart thought, but it wasn't very pleasant. 
be just the same. He yawned and closed his eyes. Was this a nap? He'd heard tales of such things back in the country. The air beat against gentle tickling waves. rolled over. Hovering above him was a huge honeybee, brimming with pollen. Down she came and landed right on top of him. Help! He squawked. The bee buzzily gathered the pollen and took off, taking Bart with her. She flew up and down and up and down. Bart could see sky and field and sky and field. <sighs> His knees tickled at his nose. Achoo! Bart fell down, down, down and landed with a whoomp on another nail. to his feet. I'm alive, he cried, and I'm probably the only sand egg ever in the history of ant that could fly. Bart didn't notice the dark clouds in the sky. Plop, plop, clippity, plop, plop, plop. Bart looked up. His first ever rain. Splosh, splosh. Raindrops burst upon him. The dandelion swayed. Bart slipped off into a puddle and came up gasping. He had to get back to the nest. I'll never let you back in. Billy's words came rushing back. Get a move on, never stop, never tarry. An ant who wastes time will never marry. They all came back to him, the words every ant heard from the day he died. He staggered up to the entrance of the nest. There at the top stood the guard. Bart realized with a horrible start that he carried nothing. No lace bug wing, no big old crumb, not even a grain of sand. Nothing useful. Halt! cried the guard. Who goes there? It's me, stammered Bart. Bart the sand ant. Sand ant? What are you doing out here? Wild lies flashed through Bart's head. Maybe he could say he was kidnapped by earthworms, but then he'd cry. I took a day off, Bart whispered. I'm not doing anything. I'm being totally and completely useless. I floated down a stream. I almost took a nap, and I flew on a bee. That was mostly by mistake. A day off, said the guard. You took the day off? Bart nodded in agreement. The guard paused and then said quietly, I took the day off from the swamp. Anyone, snapped the guard. Not a peep, never a word. Still, if you just pick up that moth wing and make it snappy, I'll let you back in. I always bring back a bit of something, muttered the guard as Bart slipped past. That's what the others do. Others? Bart asked. Sometimes, the guard said softly. Well, sometimes an ant just sneaks into the sky and back up. Then he frowned. Bart hurried to tunnel 1998. Floyd had cleared away his mound of sand and Bart stood. I'll do twice as much tomorrow, Bart promised. Tell me about your day off, Floyd whispered. Tell me everything. And Bart did. Once, twice, again and again, all through the long summer, Bart told Floyd about sun and frog. One day, when it was nearly fall, Bart found Floyd standing stock still, staring up at that sparkle of tail. I couldn't, Floyd gulped. Bart laid down his grain of sand. Come on, I'll show you. But, but wait a minute, cried Floyd. Never ever in the history of antdom has an ant taken a second day off.
Bart just grinned, and the two friends began. Okay, that was an ant's day off. What'd you guys think? Have you ever taken a day off? What'd you do? Okay, our next book is Diary of a Spider by Doreen Cronin. Pictures by Harry Woods, published by Joanna Colton Books. March 1st. Today was Grandparents Day at school, so I bought Grandpa Woody. He taught us three things. One, spiders are not insects. Insects have six legs. Two, without spiders, insects could take over the world. Three, butterflies taste better with a little barbecue sauce. March 16th. Grandpa says that in his day, flies and spiders did not get along. Things are different now. This is awesome! March 29th. Today in gym class, we learned how to catch the wind so we could travel to faraway places. When I got home, I made up flashcards so I could practice. One, climb high. Two, release silk. Three, catch wind. Fly made up her own flashcard. One, fly. I'm starting to see why Grandpa doesn't like her. April 1st. Went to the park with my sister today. We tried the seesaw. It didn't work. We tried the tire swing. It didn't work. We spun a huge sticky web on the water fountain. That worked. April 12th. Today was safety day at school. We learned that vacuums eat spider webs and are very, very dangerous. If you hear a vacuum, you should stop, drop, and run. Stop what you're doing. Drop from the web. Run like crazy. April 13th. We had a vacuum drill today. I stopped what I was doing, forgot where I was going, and ran screaming from the room. Help! We're having another drill. April 17th. I'm sleeping over at Worm's house tonight. I hope they don't have leaves and rotten tomatoes for dinner. More leaves to learn. May 7th. Mom said I was getting too big for my own skin, so I molted. That is so funny. May 8th. Today was show and tell, so I brought in my old skin. My teacher called on it to plead the Pledge of Allegiance. You there, why don't you get us started? June 5th. Daddy Longlegs made fun of Fly because she eats with her feet. Now she won't come out of her tree house. I'm going to find him and give him a piece of my mind. June 6th. I found Daddy Longlegs. He's a lot bigger than I thought he was. I gave him a piece of my lunch instead. June 7th. Fly's treehouse blew away in the wind today. So did Grandpa. Card from Grandpa today. Dear Spider, ooh la la, I've landed in Paris. French buns are delicious. Au revoir, Grandpa. Leg of French nap. Give it a try. June 30th. Grandpa came home today. I couldn't wait to hear about how he rode the winds all the way over the ocean. Turns out, he caught a breeze to the airport and napped in first class. Second, Fly came over to play today. She got stuck in our web and her mom had to come get her. 
Grandpa laughed a little too loud. From now on, we have to play in Bly's house. Hi, Mom! July 9th. Today was my birthday. Grandpa decided I was old enough to know the secret to the long, happy life. Never fall asleep in your shoes. July 16th. Things I scared. One, why is mom? It wasn't his fault, mom. Two, tiny bug. Three, people using water fountains at the pond. July 17th. Things that scare me. One, daddy long legs. Two, vacuum. Three, people with big August 1st. I wish the people wouldn't judge all spiders based on a few spiders that bite. I know if we took the time to get to know each other, we would get along just fine. Just like me and... Alright everyone, thank you for coming to story time. Now, just because we're done reading does not mean we have to be done with story time. If you come to the library this week, you can pick up a story time kit which will be fun filled like two books that may be the books you read today. Each kit comes with a coloring sheet for craft and a tasty recipe that you can make with your product. This week, our craft is this little guy, paper ladybug. To get a kit, you need to come to the Fairfield County Library to look for some crates in the children's section. Now we have two crates, one for Mondays and one for Wednesdays. So you want to make sure to grab the right kits or you could end up with something completely different than what I show you. Kits for this story time whenever there's a new story time, but we might still have some left over from last week if you missed it. It never hurts to ask one of the librarians. Maybe ask for me, Miss Ina. Okay, everybody, thank you for joining me for story time. Once again, my name is Miss Ina, and I hope to see you in the library this week to pick up a story time kit. It's time to say goodbye, but I look forward to seeing you all next time. Bye!